Hello everyone and welcome back! In this lesson we are going to start to explore some of the querying capabilities of Firestore. Let's go back here to our Firestore console and have a look here at our courses collection. So as you can see we have here a list of courses, each course with multiple attributes. We would like to do different queries to this collection. Not only would we like to retrieve the complete list of courses, but we would like for example to do some pagination logic and select here some of the courses based on the sequential number. We might be looking for a particular course based on the document ID, but we also might want to look for a course based on its URL. We could also search this collection for all the courses that contain the category beginner, for example. We would also like to retrieve here the complete list and order everything by sequence number. Let's then see how can we perform these multiple queries. In order to query the collection, we need to provide here a second argument. This is the query function. The query function is going to have one argument which is a reference to the collection and then here using the reference to the collection we are going to be able to specify a query that we want to make. Using here our autocompleter we can see that we have here multiple possibilities available. We can for example order the collection by a given field. So in this case we are going to order this by the sequential number field. Let's have a look at this query in action. We reload the application and as we can see now our courses are sorted by the sequential number field. Besides ordering the results we can also specify here some filtering criteria to our collection. So for that we are going to use the WHERE method. Let's say that we want to use the exact same field, the sequential number field. We are going to use here a comparison operation, so for that we are going to pass in here the equals operator as a string and then we need to specify the value that we are looking for. Let's use here for example sequence number number 2, so this would be the Angular Core Deep Dive course. If we refresh our application we are going to see that we got here an error, let's have a look at it. As we can see the error message is order by clause cannot contain a field with an equality filter, so the problem here is that we are filtering for the values that have the sequence number field set to 2 and then we are trying to order the results by that same field. Notice that there is no way for Angular Fire to know that we expect only one result from this query. This sequential number field is a field like any other and so there could potentially be multiple results for this query. Now the problem is that if we would get here multiple results, they would all have the same sequential number. This means that there would be no meaningful way for ordering these results using this ordering criteria. And so, instead of returning us a list with no meaningful order, Angular Fire preventively froze this error. So, in order to fix this, we are going to remove here the order by clause, and we are going to reload the application, and this time around, as expected, we only get back here one result. Let's now say that instead of an equality match, we would like to get all the courses that are bigger than the sequence number 0, but that are also smaller than let's say the sequence number 5. So we are going to copy here the WHERE clause and add here a second WHERE clause. Let's say that we want the sequence number smaller than or equal to 5. So if we try this out, we are going to see that this time around, we are going to get here multiple courses. Notice that we could have also written this pagination logic in an alternative way. We would start by ordering the results using the sequential number and then we can use the following methods. We can use start at to say that we want the element starting at index 0 and then we would like our query to end at the value 5. So this would get us back essentially the same results as we had before. Notice that before we were not starting with the course with sequence number number 0 and instead we were starting our list directly at sequence number 1 because we were using a greater than condition. So in order to do the same we would have to use the start after API. So if we use start after 0 then we are going to see that the first element is not getting included just like it happened before with the greater than condition. Another thing that we can query is the presence of a value in an array. Let's switch back for a moment to our database and remember that the categories field is an array field that can potentially contain multiple values. Let's now see how can we write a query that searches for a given element inside the categories array. Switching back to our application, let's now write a query that searches for 
only the courses with category beginner. So let's remove this query here and let's start writing our new query. We're going to add here a where clause and we're going to specify here what is the field that we want to query, in this case the categories field. We are going to do a search inside an array, so we are going to use the array contains query. Now we need to pass in here only the array value that we are looking for. In our case, we are just looking for beginner courses. Let's run this. We are going to reload here our application and see that indeed only the beginner courses are getting listed here. If we now click on the advanced tab, we are going to see that this tab is empty. So this confirms that indeed we are only selecting here the beginner courses. We were doing this filtering here simply as an example, so to finish the lesson, let's fix the implementation of the load all courses method. In this case, we simply want to order by the sequential number field. If we now reload the application, we are going to see that our results are ordered by the sequential number as expected. You might think that these are only just a few examples of the type of queries that we can do with Firestore, but this is in fact a comprehensive list. So we can do equality queries using the double equals operator. We can also look for inequality using different than. We can do queries based on a range using greater than, less than, etc. The usual range operators. And we can add an array contains query to our compound query. We can order in a given field and we can select slices of that result set using the pagination operators. And those are essentially all the querying possibilities that we have available. So if you look here through the list using our auto completion, we are going to see that indeed we don't have here other querying capabilities available. We don't have, for example, the possibility of joining two collections together. We would have to do that manually here on the client side by calling one collection, getting an ID to another collection and then performing a second query programmatically. And we will show examples of how to do that later in this course. On the other hand, Firestore gives us some very strong performance guarantees. So with Firestore, unlike a traditional SQL database, we are sure that the querying time in order to execute one of these queries that we have demonstrated here is only dependent on the number of results that gets returned. This means that if we are querying for five courses in a data set of a thousand courses, that is going to take about the same time as querying those same five courses in a data set of a million courses. So the size of the data set does not influence the query response time, it's the size of the returned result that is going to influence the query result time. This means that with Firestore, it's basically almost impossible to write a slow query. Also, we will never have to split our database into multiple databases due to the increased volume of the dataset. That is known as sharding and that is not necessary with Firestore. With Firestore, we have the guarantee that we can keep everything in one single database. Let's now continue to explore the querying capabilities of Firestore. We are now going to talk about compound queries and we're going to continue to build our courses service as we continue to implement the multiple screens of our application.